sound speeds. And if you're a corporate video producer, an indie sound mixer, a YouTuber, or maybe even an ENG sound mixer, and you have a need for some wireless microphones, then you're going to want to pay close attention to this video. Because in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the DD Connect wireless system, a complete two-channel wireless microphone system for under $700. Oh, yeah. As you know, I don't waste my time with unboxings, but I will go over the contents of this pretty sturdy carrying case complete with foam inserts separating all the different components of the DD Connect wireless system. Here's the product user manual, two transmitters along with the antennas for those transmitters, the dual receiver along with the antennas for those receivers. Now, for everything else, I'm going to at least go through where they're located and we'll break down what these things are later. There's a master slave cable right here, a cold shoe adapter, an update adapter, a TRS to TRS locking cable. There is two TRS locking to XLR cables, two USB-C charging cables, and two lavalier microphones. Let's get into this. The Deity Connect wireless microphone system operates in the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency range, which is completely separate from the UHF frequency range that most transmitters and receivers this day and age operate within, typically between about 470 MHz and 608 MHz in the United States. Those transmitters and receivers are not going to interfere with the Deity Connect system. Before we go any farther, full disclosure, Deity did send me this Connect system in exchange for a fair review. I do get to keep it after the review, and I'm not going to let that affect my opinion of the Deity Connect system, so you can expect this to be an honest review. First, the boring part. The product manual is indeed written in English as well as other languages, and it's very easy to follow even if you're new to wireless. There's also a service card that contains information about the two-year warranty that comes with the Connect system, what it covers and what it doesn't. Yay, this wireless system passed inspection. This is one of two BPTX transmitters that comes with the Deity Connect system, and this is the Duo RX, the dual receiver that comes with the Deity Connect system. Now, not only is this a transmitter and a receiver, but this is also a receiver and this is a transmitter. This is a dual true diversity wireless microphone system that is fully digital and has encryption built in. Now, these two components actually wirelessly talk to each other. So not only are you able to send the transmission of data from this transmitter to this receiver, but this receiver is able to talk back to the transmitter. So you can make settings on either one of them and they talk to each other instantly and share that information. Both come with the same built-in rechargeable 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, which is not user replaceable. So you'll have to send it back to the mothership if you ever need to replace them. The BPTX is made almost entirely of aluminum, with exception of the sides and the top, which are made of plastic. But because of the raised lip, the aluminum protects the plastic quite effectively. The antenna at the top does not suffer the same antenna whip noise issues that some other transmitters do suffer from. The locking TRS 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter connector here where you would plug in a lavalier microphone is compatible with pretty much every single locking trs connector on a lavalier microphone on the market on the front is a one inch blue only oled display and the antenna is connected up via a typical sma connector and this is a 24-bit 48k wireless system that is completely digital and encrypted the buttons make a really strong click when you press them and on the back is a really strong clip and on the bottom is a USB-C charging port. The BPTX has a single 0 dB antenna, while the Duo RX has dual 3 dB antennas. The left antenna goes to transmitter 1, and the right antenna goes to transmitter 2. Now let's break this down. The Duo RX is also made of aluminum and is extremely strong unless you try to press in on the sides, which are made of plastic. And it has the same OLED blue-only display on top with strong buttons when you try to click them. On the back of the Duo RX is a USB-C charging port, and although it is USB-C, it does not require a full 1.5 to 2 amps that a USB-C protocol usually dishes out. As a matter of fact, if you plug this into any typical USB-A charging cube, it can be a 2.0 USB and only output out half an amp and still keep this charging while in use. 
Another thing about this charging port is that if you use the master slave cable, which is included, you can connect up another Duo RX from another Deity Connect system, and they will automatically frequency coordinate with each other. But do note that you do still have to connect up the charging cable to both the receivers at the exact same time because it does not carry power with it from one unit to the other. Next to the charging port are two outputs, one for channel A, one for channel B. Remember this cable? This is a locking TRS mini plug or a an 8th inch 3.5 millimeter output. And once it is locked in place and screwed in, you can output both wireless channels to a DSLR camera. And when you do that and have it set up to do so, this becomes a monitor so that you can plug in your headphones. Or if you prefer, you can use these cables, which allow you to output each channel individually via XLR. On the bottom of the Duo RX is a piece of soft side Velcro. Soft side on one side, hard side on the other. And there's various different ways that you can use it. You can reverse it if you'd like to, for example. Or the way I just did it, by wrapping it all the way around, if you have a second connect system, you can stick them together and they're going to hold together by Velcro. It also helps you hold on to the inside of a bag. Remove the Velcro all together, revealing two holes on the bottom. One is a quarter inch 20 thread, and one is a 3 8 inch 16 thread. The quarter inch 20 allows you to connect up things like the cold shoe adapter that comes with the Kinect system, so that way you can connect it up on top of your DSLR camera. As for this, it allows you to connect it up to something that is an audio component, like, I guess, a boom pole? Here's another interesting thing. Because the BPTX and the Duo RX have removable SMA style antennas, you can replace them with high gain models if you'd like to, such as anything that comes on a Wi Fi wireless router. Or you can even connect up an extension cable and remote them up really, really high should you want to. The included Connect Lav looks very similar to a Sennheiser MKE Mark II lavalier microphone or a DD V Lav, except that this does not have the microprocessor like the V Lav does, and the V Lav does not have a locking 8th inch cable on it. Now, if you were to click it like here, it's going to sound very similar to the VLAV also. But I do want to point out that the metal little clip that holds it onto this particular clip, if you want to hide it underneath clothing, you have to remove it. And it's not exactly easy. You have to kind of go around and kind of pry the metal back. And when you do so, it kind of makes you feel like you're going to bend it out of whack. Like I said, it's not that easy. Ha! There it goes. The Deity Connect wireless system uses something called adaptive frequency hopping. You can read about it on the Deity Connect website, but here's the gist of it. At any given time, the Connect system is using nine different channels. That's four core channels that it uses constantly for audio and five trait channels that it's constantly using to scan and test other channels. And if one of those channels that it scans and tests is better than one of the core channels, it will automatically replace it. The Connect is also constantly hopping from one channel to another, and it sends one or two packets of information in a hop that is only about 1.5 milliseconds long. Because the system is constantly scanning, it's also planning up to the next 70 hops. And so once it sends one or two packets of data, it will go ahead and hop to the next clear frequency that it scanned. Deity's website goes into a technical explanation not only of how it finds the next frequency, but how it works effectively between two pulsing Wi-Fi channels. Now imagine this in layman's terms. Each of the pulsing channels on the Wi-Fi that would be closest to where it's actually working are highways. And what the Connect system does is it lane splits between the two of them. Because remember, they're pulsing. What the Connect system will do is when this Wi Fi is pulsing, it will pulse not in the same interval. Essentially, that's it. Now let's talk a moment about RF interference and packet loss. There's a lot of 2.4 gigahertz frequencies out there. 802.11b, G, N, all those wireless protocols that you're familiar with in the world of Wi-Fi are going to be competing with the Connect system in a very tight space. And the more Wi-Fi there is in the area, the more potential interference your Connect system could run into. Not to mention Bluetooth works in a 2.45 gigahertz range, which is very close to the Connect system as well. And some of that RF spray could also affect so what happens if you happen to run into interference? If the RF in the area starts to exceed a certain threshold and you start to experience packet loss, like for example, this packet is lost from the transmitter and the receiver didn't catch it, what the Connect system will automatically do is in the next hop, it will not only send this audio information, it will send this audio information as well, allowing it to actually repair itself by sending that information a little bit later. But the cost of this is 19 milliseconds in delay, which is about half a frame on both NTSC and PAL video systems. And to give you an idea of what 19 milliseconds sounds like, 
Here is my hard-lined microphone that you typically hear me talk into. And here is a 19 millisecond delay on the DD Connect system right now. This microphone is going to be in your left ear. The Connect system is going to be in your right ear. And as I talk right now, you're hearing the delay live that you experience when you're listening to your headphones on the Connect system. Now I know what you're thinking. This is a little bit kind of confusing to hear. Well, that's because you're hearing an echo right now because you're hearing both of them. Now, if I'm talking live right next to you and you are listening to me through the Deity Connect wireless system, if I'm a few feet away, you're going to naturally make up that delay just from the air and the frequencies of my voice traveling through the air to get to your headphones. And that's not going to be as much of a delay if you're only about 20 or so feet away from your talent. So keep that in mind. So if you're using hardline microphones, like for example, a boom microphone, along with your wireless DD Connect system, you're going to want to add a 19 millisecond delay to your hardline inputs. Or you could simply use your DD Connect system along with a wireless microphone, such as the DD VMic D3 Pro, and you are completely wireless and you don't have to worry about delay. Now let's do a walkthrough of the menu structure on both the BPTX body pack transmitter and the Duo RX dual receiver units, starting with this display screen. Note I'm only using one of the two transmitters right now, which is why the second transmitter here is listed as offline. I'm speaking directly into this transmitter right here, which is why you see the VU meter on the top left popping away as I speak. Same thing here. And to the right of that is the battery indicator. To the right of that is signal strength. And then if you notice here down at the bottom, it says user ID, mic one and mic one right here. So you can at a glance see the settings on the fly that are identical on both the transmitter and the receiver. Now let's go into the menu structure itself. Hitting menu right here, it has receiver up at the very, very top. Receiver being the Duo RX. And it also gives me control over the TX, transmitter one and transmitter two, which it calls A and B right here. Now auto lock, what is that? If I press select, I have various different selections from never, five seconds, 10, 15, 20, one minute, two minutes, five and 10. There's nothing above that. And what that means is that if I choose, for example, five seconds and hit enter, and then I go back to my main screen, after five seconds, this screen is gonna go dark. And that is a battery saving feature. See right here? Now, instead of panicking if that happens and you've got to get back into your menu, all you do is you press up and down at the exact same time and it comes back on. Now, for our video here, I'm going to disable that so that it is no longer going to sleep. That way we can actually see our screen. System reset, we're not going to use. And language, we are set to English on and we're not going to go any farther with that. Now, with regards to the transmitter, I'd like to point out something. I can adjust transmitter settings from the receiver as well. And part of that is because of the receiver and the transmitter are not actually just receivers and transmitters. They are both transceivers capable of receiving and transmitting at the exact same time. Now, you may look at this and say there is only these two antennas on the receiver, but there's actually two horizontal antennas in here for the horizontal polarity, and that comes in handy too. Uh, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at the settings right here on the transmitter. And note that they're the exact same thing on both transmitter one and transmitter two. Going into our selections, we're going to start at the very, very top here. And the very first thing here is transmitter sleep. If I were to press that, that's a battery saving feature, and that is going to sleep this transmitter. Let's go ahead and show you that right now. You can't hear my voice at all when the transmitter is slept. That's a battery saving feature where you can remotely sleep it. And that comes in handy for saving battery life over time. Now, the next thing here is mic level. If I were to adjust that on the fly, you're going to hear my level go up or down accordingly. And because I don't want to blow my meters here, I'm going to go way down quietly. And notice it gets very, very loud all the way up to 36 dB. And it goes all the way down to negative 12 dB. Not all lav mics are created equally, so it comes in handy having that much gain either plus or minus in order to set your level correctly. You also have a limiter, which you should know what that is. And by setting it, it's gonna help prevent clipping. 
Now, going back here, the next thing you're going to have is a low cut. There's two settings on that, 75 hertz and 150 hertz. You also have what's called a frequency boost. That allows you to overcome things like heavy-duty wind protection or chin shadow. And by going up like this, you notice that it starts to boost the highs in my voice. And I'm not going to use that in this particular video. I'm going to go back to 0 dB because I don't actually need it. And then the next setting is mute. Kind of like sleep, except that it simply just makes my voice go quiet as soon as I engage it. We don't need to do that. We want to actually hear my voice. And now RF level. It starts at 10 milliwatts, goes to 25, 50, and a 100, but there's also an automatic setting that allows the transmitter and receiver to constantly analyze the amount of power that it, see, it feels that it's necessary to maintain a good possible uh, RF signal and connection between the two. And therefore it will be saving your battery power as much as possible you also have a user id that is on the transmitter and the receiver and by going in here you can actually change the letters that you whatever you want to call the transmitter and i'm going to leave it here as mic one for right now i can also do most of these actually all of these settings on the transmitter itself as well and if i make a change on the transmitter at the exact same time you will see it change on the receiver so if i go over here and let's go into transmitter yet again and you see my mic level and my transmission level right there if i were to go into my mic level here and start adjusting it up and down you'll notice it, it is adjusting even as we speak in real time on the receiver as well as the transmitter under output level you have output type and entering that you have mono or stereo going into mono you have two selections xlr or dslr and what that corresponds to is what these two outputs do if set to xlr then both a and b go straight to xlr outputs and that would be for controlling mic one and mic two each of those having independent level. If it's set to DSLR, then you're only going to use the A output to go to your DSLR camera. Mic 1 will be on your left channel and Mic 2 will be on your right channel. And as for the B output, that becomes a headphone monitoring jack where your left ear is going to be your Mic 1 and your right ear is Mic 2. Going back into the receiver settings, we're going to go to output level. And notice that on A and B, I have it set to plus 15 dB. The reason why is because in my testing, I came to discover that the higher the output gain is, the better it is on the noise floor. Just check it out. This is a test of the Deity Connect. The microphone input gain is set to 0 dB and the receiver output gain is set to 0 dB. This is how I sound and here's the noise floor. This is the Deity Connect. The microphone input gain is still set to 0 dB, but now the output level of the receiver is set to 15 dB, plus 15 dB. Here's the noise floor. This is a test of the Deity Connect. Transmitter is still set to 0 dB, but now the receiver is set to negative 24 dB, and I am compensating with the gain on the Mix Pre 6. Here's my noise floor. In the menu, you saw system update, and here's how simple it is to actually update the DD Connect system. If you go to ddmic.com forward slash firmware, you can download the latest Connect firmware, and it comes in a zip file. You simply unzip the file onto a USB memory stick that is formatted FAT32. Then you take the USB stick, insert it inside the Connect Update adapter, and then take that adapter and stick it inside either the transmitter or the receiver. Then hit the Select button, and it will perform the update. When the system restarts, you can unplug the adapter because the update's been performed. This also factory resets everything, so in addition to repairing the transmitters and the receivers, you're going to have to go in and reset the user IDs and all your settings. But it's important to stay on top of this firmware. The reason why is, well, listen to the difference in noise between version 1 and version 1.1 firmware.
In the version 1.1 firmware, in addition to other things, it added a digital signal process, a DSP, to the noise floor, so that way it lowered the background noise. So I definitely recommend you staying on top of your firmware updates because DAD is a very fast-moving company and they're constantly listening to users and wanting to make the experience better, so they don't waste much time in getting new firmwares out. I also wanted to test the battery life on both the transmitters and the receivers, but because the transmitter has various different RF power outputs, I kind of need to test the batteries in each one of those RF power outputs. So. 10 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts, 50 milliwatts, and 100 milliwatts, I tested. Please note that when the receiver died, the transmitters went into a low power mode until the receiver turned back on again, and then the test resumed. Here's the results of my battery test. The receivers did not last nearly as long as the transmitters, so if you want to continue to use your transmitters, you gotta connect up some sort of an external power supply to the receivers, and if it's in a bag, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. With regards to transmitter RF power output levels, I ran into some kind of interesting results. The transmitter seemed to actually last longer on battery when it was at a higher power output. I don't really understand why, but it, that was my result. With the transmitters dead, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to see how long it would take to fully charge up the transmitters. Because on the DD website and in the product manual, it says that the transmitters can recharge in about 70 minutes. And that's on a rapid charger. I did connect it up to a rapid, fast charger, and here are my results. I didn't exactly receive a full charge after 70 minutes, but what I would probably guess is that if your transmitter completely died and you put it on charge during lunch, it should give you enough power to finish your day. If you're one of my subscribers and watch all my videos, or you happen to randomly come across my line of sight range test putting the Deity Connect versus the Sennheiser G4 wireless system, then you're probably familiar with that video right there. And I'm not going to show excerpts of it here. You can watch the video at the end of this video if you are so interested. But how does the Deity Connect system deal with walls? Let's test it. I have the DD Connect receiver and my Mix Pre 6 recording over there. And I'm going to be walking on the other side of this metal enclosure with two microphones on me. One is right here and the other one is right here. But the transmitters are on my belt pack right here and my wonderfully stylish single sock right down there, which simulates being on an ankle. And I'm not trying to do any kind of a fashion statement. I'm just simply walking around in this abandoned area. So if you hear me cut out, you'll know that that's the edge of the rain with range with this DD Connect system. By having one on my belt and the other one on my ankle, it's going to give us a good simulated test of range. And right now I'm going on the other side of this building. So as I walk around this edge, I'm probably pretty certain that you'll lose me from the RF. Uh, the RF will no longer make it through the building. And I'm probably speaking with nobody hearing me at this point. So might as well go on around. If you can still hear me, over here on the side. I'm walking around the side of the building. At what point you're gonna hear me come within range, but I'm walking back towards my receiver at this time. In your left ear, you're hearing the transmitter that's on my belt on the opposite side of this metal building. With your right ear, you're hearing the transmitter that's on my ankle, which of course simulates a transmitter on the ankle. I'm walking back toward the receiver, and at whatever time you hear me pop in range, you're going to say, oh, well, I know, that's obviously where the range ends on this particular test. Right now, I'm right next to the uh, Deity Connect system and my Mix Pre 6, so if you're not able to hear me in this position, there's a problem. For a second interference test, we're going to go on the other side of a brick building. Notice there's a little bitty wall right here, so not only are we going to be going through this wall and this wall with this range test, we're going to be going through that third wall after about another 10 feet or so. My transmitter, to, uh, the, the one that's on my belt, is on the opposite side of my body, actually through my body to get to the transmitter. And as I look around here, you'll quickly see the range now, before left is the transmitter. Two the things and enclosures, one where the transmitter on the belt is facing the receiver and one where it's firing through through, uh, through my body, one where it's not. So, sorry, I just botched my words, but I think you got the, the general idea. 
But here I am back in front of the receiver, and I know I have RF here. I'm in a parking lot now full of cars, so I'm going to try not to speak too loudly because I don't want to embarrass my daughter who's riding shotgun in the car that you're now looking through. But I'm walking amongst a whole bunch of metal cars, still with the same transmitter on my belt pack, which is in your left ear, and the ankle pack, which is on the right ear. And if you can hear me right now, we're probably firing through about vehicles. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're approaching nine, and at this point, probably around about eight feet away from the car. Probably about three vehicles is what you're hearing through right now, and it's firing through the body at this point, going back toward the receiver. Oh, and by the way, it's also firing through my car because it's on the inside. On the bottom, underneath the dash, uh, sitting in my daughter's lap. So there you have it, firing through multiple vehicles out of here. Layer upon layer of metal and brick is going to be very difficult for any wireless system to punch through. And doesn't matter what frequency range, it's going to be more difficult for your transmitter to talk to your receiver and vice versa. And because this DA to connect works in 2.4 gigahertz, that's a higher frequency. And typically higher frequencies have a more difficult time to get through thicker substances. But I found that in my house, in basically any kind of environment that I tested it in, when I wasn't putting it through a whole bunch of hard surfaces, it didn't really give me that many issues. I actually had pretty good range with it. Because I'm sure inquiring minds are going to want to know, I'm going to do one more field test. This is a Deity BPTX in perfect working order and conditions. Notice no blemishes, no scratches, no anything wrong with it. Okay? Now, let me ask you this. How many times have you put a transmitter on someone, like an actor or talent, only to find that they destroy it? That happens quite often. As a matter of fact, we don't like that to happen, but it does happen. Something will fall off of an ankle strap and fall and scrape all over the ground. And that's a terrible thing for us because this is our gear. Now, ever since I did my review of the DDS Mic 2 and attempted to destroy it, people have been asking me to field test some more DD products. Well, I figured there's nothing better than testing a transmitter to see how durable it is. So reluctantly, I'm going to ask you to not cringe while you watch this. I'm walking, I'm an actor, and suddenly, oh! This transmitter has fallen out of my ankle strap. Okay, that's bad, but it seems to be working. So, that is a very bad thing to happen because it's, you know, going to scratch and get damage all done to it, right? But as you can see right here, it has taken very minor damage, if anything. I mean, I don't even really see any blemishes. Part of that's because it has a very strong body. And this is something that is very, very useful when you do any kind of a pro... Sorry. When you do... Sorry, I'm, I just can't hold it for anything. When you hold a piece of gear like this, you have to make sure that you hold it really well. I, I'm just, I, I don't know why, I have butterfingers. So I'm gonna just do this instead. But anyway, this is a very worst case scenario. You really don't want to have a piece of gear fall and hit the ground like that. And falling from four feet is really nothing to laugh at. And I don't want to really do that again, so... I'm really sorry, guys. I'm a professional sound guy, yet I can't seem to hold on to a wireless transmitter for anything today. I'm just butterfingers all over the place. Luckily, this DD Connect is holding up pretty well, and there's not really any damage done to it. Because I would really hate for this thing to get damaged like, you know, if it were to drop again. So let's not do that. Dad, did you mean for that to happen? No, sweetie. I've been very careless today and accidentally doing things like that quite a bit. After reviewing the footage from that terrible accidental fall, I did come to realize that this BPTX is still working great, except the connector at the very, very top is slightly loose. Check this out. If I go like that, it's suddenly not working. But if I press this way, it suddenly comes right back on again. So that seems to be a very, very minor little fix that Deity would probably be able to fix if you didn't want to take the thing apart and try to fix it yourself. So after concluding this drop test, I did reach out to Deity and ask them how much would the repair of this transmitter cost. And they told me $25. So for $25, I could get a fully working transmitter that took all that punishment and it would be in perfect working order again. So what do I think of the Deity Connect system? Well, let's get into it.
I love the solid build quality. Despite all the punishment I put the transmitter through, it did not really show any signs of damage despite the fact that I threw it way up in the sky. And I also like the fact that the receiver is able to both charge and function off of only USB 2.0.5 amps. That's really impressive. I love how simple the menu structure is. It's very easy to navigate to exactly what you want it to and make adjustments accordingly. I also really love the cables that come with the Kinect system, allowing you to output either to a DSLR or to dual XLRs that is invaluable. I also love that the antennas are replaceable. So either if you damage an antenna or you want to replace it with something else and see if you can get a bigger output, I do love that. And if you want to remote your antennas, that's even an option. I also like the fact that if the transmitter and the receiver are no longer talking to itself on firmware 1.1 or higher, it reads offline. I also love the foresight that DD had when they created the Kinect system and how it easily, with the cable that's connected, allows it to work with the DD VMIC D3 Pro for a wireless system. That to me is really cool. I also think the reversible Velcro on the bottom of the receiver is a nice touch. Not only can you use it to grab something like a tripod leg, you can also use it on anything that's either hard side or soft side Velcro. And underneath that, if you want to use the quarter 20 or the 3 8 16 inch threads to connect it up either to either audio or camera equipment, you have that option. If you are new to wireless, you don't have to worry about any kind of frequency coordination. It automatically handles that for you. And the fact that it even tells you how much latency it has built into the system, unlike many wireless systems, I think it makes it very easy for you to correct for that 19 millisecond latency. Oh, and also, you have to love the fact that Antenna Whip is not going to create wireless hits in your audio. It would be really weird if I had absolutely no cons to mention, and I did come across a few things I would like to see different or changed, and I'm going to share them with you now. Because of the nature of the DD Connect system keeping four channels in core and five in trail, it's constantly using nine channels in addition to constantly scanning. And because of this, and the fact that not only are the transmitters transmitting, but the receivers are also, there are three transmitters in each DD Connect system. And therefore, DD itself does not recommend you using more than two Connect systems in a master slave relationship because you start using too many channels in the wireless spectrum and you start having issues with interference. Therefore, four transmitters is the maximum amount of transmitters DD recommends that you use in a DD Connect system. And if you have any use for more transmitters than that, you're going to have to resort to UHF or some other wireless system in addition to the Connect. Although I fully understand the tech regarding the adaptive frequency hopping as it is explained on the DD Connect's website, I'm not 100% about the lane splitting analogy, but then I'm not an 802.11 BG and Wi-Fi guru, but what I can tell you is in areas of higher 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi activity, I did run into diminished range on the Deity Connect system. So that tells me there may be something else out there in the world that may not be playing right with Wi-Fi and could be causing interference that is not mentioned on the Connect's website. If you use the Duo RX in a room with low light levels, you may find the bright blue screen to be hard on your eyes, and so you only have two options at this given time. Either leave it on and deal with it, or you can allow it to power off and then you can't monitor your Wi-Fi. But I understand from Deity that there's going to be an update in the near future that is going to fix that and allow you to adjust the brightness on that so it will no longer be an issue. If you're sensitive to audio delays, then you might find the 19 millisecond latency of the Deity Connect system to be a little too much for you. But here's the trick. Back off a little bit from your talent and you'll find that the voices will reach your ear at the same time as you're hearing it through the wireless and it's not going to really be an issue anymore. As a firmware 1.1, you should not expect the VU meters on the front of the BPTX transmitter to function similarly to other wireless units out there. It is not going to give you an accurate representation of your microphone sensitivity level. And if you try to set it visually, you're going to be overmodulating and distorting your audio. If you set it by ears, you'll realize that the optimal setting is if the VU meter is barely moving at all. To give you an example, look at these two audio levels. The top was set visually and the bottom was set with my ears. Both of them are normalized to the exact same level. And you tell me which one looks healthier. I really wish you could remove the battery on the inside of the transmitters, but because that's not an option, they do kind of give you a workaround, which is if the transmitter dies, put it on charge during lunch and give it about half an hour and it should give you enough charge to finish your day. So there is that. Although I love the fact that the limiters on the Connect system are analog, I do recommend playing a little on the cautious side when you're setting your microphone sensitivity levels. If your actors get a little bit too hot and your levels are up too high, it can cause clipping and that makes a little bit of a distortion sound. But then there is an easy fix. 
go into the receiver and back off on your microphone sensitivity level. So I guess it's a workaround. If you're using the Kinect system in an extremely quiet room, then you may notice the self noise, but then this is not a $5,000 wireless microphone system, is it? But there's a couple of things you need to check. Number one, are you operating in firmware 1.1 or higher on both the transmitters and receivers? Number two, is your output level on your receiver set to its maximum setting? If so, you're gonna get the minimal amount of self noise that I have found to be in the system, but definitely run your own test to verify. Now to nitpicky things. If you're recording and your receiver is too close to your transmitters and you need to make some sort of an adjustment, the loud clicks on the receiver may be picked up by your transmitters. So I wish that those were actually muted. The second thing is it does give you two charging cables on the inside of the Kinect system, but I wish that there was a cube or something that allowed you to plug it up to a wall and charge two things simultaneously. But those things are very minor. Keep in mind that I am a professional sound guy, so I can be very demanding and critical of a wireless system. But don't let that steer you away from the Deity Connect system because it is extremely innovative. The tech behind it is absolutely amazing, and I believe it to be the best in class. Sub $700, this system is two transmitters and a dual receiver complete with a bunch of accessories for $669. There are links down in the description if you'd like to check it out, and I highly recommend you to do so because I'll tell you this, I'm going to be using this Kinect system for quite a few of my videos in the future. I'm very interested to hear what your opinions are of the Deity Connect system. Please write them in the comment section down below. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more product reviews, fun stuff, maybe with wireless and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.